Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week I'm attacking a Rolls Royce from Matchbox. Um, this totally did not go the way as planned, so it turned into a post apocalyptic build. As always, if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So I have a Matchbox Rolls Royce given to me by uh, William, Mr. K7 Robinson, as part of um, a little task that he wanted me to do. We had a vision, or he had a vision, and I was on board with it. And unfortunately, the car took a turn for the worst. Overall, it looks pretty good. The door's open, a traditional Matchbox car. Um, but I did notice that one of the posts were broken. So I figured a little bit of JB Weld and I'll go on my way and everything will be perfectly fine. So I do the normal, I take it apart, I will inspect all the parts and whatever. The goal was to build some sort of a street machine. He had showed me a picture, he pulled offline and uh, I just thought it was awesome to uh, take a Rolls Royce and do something different with it. Um, so I started it and this is kind of where I was at and um, overall, the car is in actually really good shape, surprisingly. Um, you know, doors open, doors are in good shape. All the little plastic pieces for the bumpers and everything was really good. The base was good. Um, so I'm going according to plan, and uh, which is odd because I usually don't plan anything. Um, you know, the, the grill was in a little worse to wear, but not too, too bad. The windshield, um, slippery little thing. <laughs> Um, was kind of scratch, but overall not bad. Um, you know, for for the age, I think it was all sandable and prime um, buffable. Interior was really clean. Um, the dashboard had a little bit of a crack on the uh, hinge part, but overall it had no bearing on anything. A little rusty on the uh, spring that holds the wheels. Um, so I take those out again. Everything's going normal. And I've got some street machine uh, rail riders that I was going to or that I do end up using on there. Um, the problem I was running into at this point, everything's still going according to plan, um, was to tuck those in underneath and give it a nice nice stance and a rake. So I was going to tub the rear end. And I was going to drop the front end a little bit so it sat lower to the ground. And then I was going to put a big-ass engine in it, sticking out of it uh, with side pipes. And, I mean, I was going to go crazy with this thing. Um, and that was the plan until I put it in the stripper. Um, <laughs> that's kind of when uh, I had a talk with William, um, and I said I was going to try to fix the post. Well, come to find out, both posts were broken, and I found later that the side underneath the driver's side door, right behind the driver's side door, closest to the fender, um, was cracked all the way through. So things kind of went on hiatus for a while. And I also have, I've got a bunch of other stuff I've still got to build for William. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'll probably never be caught up completely. But I have a post-apocalyptic build, if you've paid attention to the channel. Um, I did a K7 and the... Um, chase cars to go with it. Three cars, a van, two vans and a 55 gasser. So he gave me a, I don't actually know the car. It's a 101 Dalmatians car right there. That's what I call it. And he sent it to me with some skulls and some guns and, you know, all kinds of little goodies um, that he sent to go with it. And that was going to be the boss's car, which means it would go in the back of the K7 and that's what the, the boss would drive. And I had a vision for that car. So I took that vision from that car and I put it on the Rolls Royce because we decided he's going to send me another Rolls Royce at some point to do what we discussed. So I kind of set my mind to use the same type of build I wanted to do on the other one on this one instead. And to be honest with you, I'm glad I did because I think it worked out really well. <coughs> Excuse me. 
the one thing I'm looking at right here, and I do this three freaking times, I'm trying to figure out the best way to mount the wheels on this to give it the right look that I'm looking for. Um, because now that I'm going post-apocalyptic, um, I want a different stance. And I tried going with some styrene um, flat stock to kind of offset. Then I'm like, okay, I'll use some styrene tubing that I'll mount to the styrene plastic. And I'll use that as my axle tube. That didn't work. Um, it was just slightly larger and it was a little too much slop in the wheels. So no matter what, I got to cut the wheels in half. Uh, make sure you grip them tight because those things will fly everywhere. And you'll never find them and uh, your life will pretty much suck at that point. So um, I trim them down because now I have a narrowed rear end. And I'm still hoping that the styrene will work, but it's way too much slop. So I'm going to switch to my traditional 1 16th k &S brass tubing. But since I've already done it three times, I already know the right length, so I don't have to go crazy with it. Um, you can cut this with whatever. Um, tubing cutter is probably the best thing, but I find a, a cutoff wheel works good. And then I just use the end to grind it. Um, obviously, if you're a child watching this, you should be watching it anyways. Go do your homework. But if you're an adult doing this, you know, be cautious. Um, you shouldn't really put your fingers that close to something twirling with it's designed to cut. So um, I've been doing this a lot in all my videos, or at least the last three or four. I have a piece of axle rod, which is piano wire. I stick it through the brass tubing. The brass tubing is where the axles are going to sit, and it's the same size as what I just put in there. But in order to glue them, you got to cut a couple little grooves for the glue to sit in. If you put the axle tube in, uh, the piano wire in first, it allows you to grind until you see sparks. And you know how far to go. And when you pull it out, it clears it at the same time. So now I kind of got it the stance I want, but I have a problem with the posts. So I'm going to cut it off completely. I'm taking and I'm going to cut the roof and make like a Landau roof, almost like a chauffeured car because he'd be sitting in the back because he's the boss. So now I'm making something to cover the axle. And I'm and this may not appeal to everybody, and, and I know that, and this is a risk I took doing this. I'm looking at, and this is what I wanted to do with the other one too, so it would have been the same regardless of which car I did. I wanted something that had a shiny chrome look to it. The boss's car doesn't get a lot of action. The boss would be, and again, this is my imagination running wild here, um, in my post-apocalyptic world, which is my world, I can do what I want. Uh, um, my boss's car is always up kept very well, and he has his hordes of slaves that take care of his every need, which includes keeping his car clean. So instead of painting it, putting all kinds of rust effects and weathering it and all this other crap, I decided to go a different route and go with a much more literally polished look. So right now I just cut the windshield off and I'm putting the back window in, which is the back and the sides. So you can see right now the car looks, you know, all stripped and everything else. <clears throat> I'm going to use the front windshield as well. So I'm going to cut the excess off with that. Kind of sucks with a um, jeweler saw, but you can do it. It just takes a little bit of time and patience. Um, and it's a lot, lot cleaner than trying to use the cutoff wheel on plastic because it just melts it. So you can kind of see right there what I'm going for. Uh, if my thumb wasn't in the way. <laughs> but it's kind of where I'm going. So I'm going to put some of my chrome polish on there. Um, this is semi-chrome. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. I've had it forever. Yeah, I use it on uh, chrome exhaust pipes, and it takes the blue off. You can use it on bikes, too, motorcycles. Uh, stuff works really good. I used to use it in the uh, plastics industry to polish molds. Um, so I had, <clears throat> I had some left over. So I'm going to polish it up nice, shiny, and chrome. There is chrome as I can get it with the, uh, with the polish, obviously. Um, slow speed. I'm not going crazy with it. This is actual speed. Um, just slow and steady. You'll start to see the polish and 
once you uh, start to see that shine and you think you got it all off, you haven't. Um, use a terry cloth towel or whatever and, and finish getting it off. So that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted a nice, shiny, chrome look. Exhaust pipes right out the back off the thing I made to cover the wheels. I left it intentionally open on one side so I had a place to put my, my exhaust tips. Sometimes working with this stuff, you get um, you get a lot of pleasure out of just trying different things and cutting stuff. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I don't have a plan on 90% of the things I do. And with the post-apocalyptic builds, it's awesome because I can just, I can wing it the entire way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he gave me some skulls, so I needed a place to put them. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling a hole and I'm breaking a, a drill bit. <laughs> uh, these really t small drill bits are a pain in the ass sometimes. Um, I do have a, uh, a hand drill, but I was stubborn and I wanted to get it. So I'm drilling two holes in the back to be able to put a bar across the uh, deck lid. And that's where I'm going to mount my skulls to. Almost like a, a sign to people behind you. You know, I don't know. Skulls make everything kind of cool. So that's why I did it. The bar itself was made out of um, the same piano axle wire that I use for wheels. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so I apologize. <clears throat> the guns he gave me, I used Citadel Black. I spray painted them. And then I took the lead belcher and I dry brushed over that. The bottom, Agrath Earthshade, which has got kind of a dirty, grungy, brownish look to it, as opposed to the Dulln Oil, which is a black wash. Again, I wasn't trying to go completely grungy and dirty on this. This car is in the back of the K7 in transport, and it only comes out, you know, when he's showing off or um, he wants to make a scene. So now I'm just going to take and do some touch-up stuff. I'm going to do, um, I did yellow for the headlights just because I thought it stood out a little bit. Um, headlights, taillights, um, running lights, so on and so forth. Um, I do a black wash on the grill. Uh, to make it stand out a little bit, because if you remember, the grill was in a little rough shape. Some of the chrome was um, chipped off. So, um, again, uh, trying to find that balance of I want it to be shiny and have a polished look to it, but yet still kind of keep that post-apocalyptic look to a degree. It was a fine line because part of me just wanted to beat the crap out of this and you know, add a lot of rust and, and all kinds of stuff. But um, I had to practice restraint, which I'm not very good at, um, and just try to keep this tone down. And again, this may not be everybody's cup of tea. You know, you think post-apocalyptic, you, you know, um, some of the builds I've done, I've gone completely crazy. Even the, the ones that this belongs to, the set, which is the K7 and the uh, chase vehicles, which I have a bunch of pictures at the end. So please stick around and watch all of it. Um, I do a short reveal video and then I got a bunch of pictures of the car alone and then with the whole set. And I'm hoping when you see it together, it'll all kind of at least make sense whether you agree with me or not. It'll at least kind of come together. The two guns are easy. I'm just going to mount them right on the hood. Um, that's about as post-apocalyptic as I get. Um, I did scratch up the windshield and make some spider webs on it so that on the passenger side, which would would be still on the other side for um, U.S. drivers, but the steering wheel's on the passenger side. So now uh, the only thing I'm really doing is I'm taking some Zandri dust um, from Citadel, and I'm going to dry brush, and this has a sand look. So I'm dry brushing the wheels because he would be driving in sand, um, and then a little bit on the lower parts of the vehicle, um, the rockers uh, behind the rear wheels a little bit, over the wheel wells. Um, that's about as extravagant as I get on this. This was a fun build. Um, again, I've kind of taken a, a leap here on doing something a little bit different. Um, I did wash um, down the interior as well. And then I'm just going to take some soot um, weathering powder and just do a little bit above the um, tailpipes. And really, I'm just hitting the bumper just to kind of give it that look. I don't use the weathering powder as often as I should, and I apologize. 
I know a lot of people have asked how to use it, and I'm still learning myself, so I don't feel qualified to show anybody anything. Um, and I'm also doing a little bit around the guns, just like where the ammo would fall or whatever. As always, um, you know, this channel is made possible by everybody who watches and subscribes, especially my Patreon members. A huge shout out to them. The ones with the YouTube icons next to them are linked down below. Please double check and go uh, go check them out. They get some amazing stuff and uh, <clears throat> they're well worth watching and uh, subscribing if you feel so inclined. What I started with overall looked pretty decent. Um, again, both posts, uh, A pillars are, are junk. And if you look real close at the bottom of the door right there in the front of the passenger side door, gone. So this is what I ended up with. Um, I, I really like it. I hope you guys do as well. Um, I think it just has just the right look. It was exactly what I was after. Um, again, taste is, you know, different for everybody. So. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this and stick around and watch all the pictures and I will catch you on the next one.